Hello again everyone, it's me Matt, I really appreciate you stopping by on today's video. Self-propelled artillery, I absolutely love it. Unfortunately today it doesn't have tracks, it does have wheels, but we are talking about the G6 Rhino self-propelled howitzer vehicle of the South African Defense Force. Now before we go ahead any further with this video, I do have to say that this video is brought to you by Ridge Wallet. They were kind enough to allow me to sponsor their fantastic product, and to be honest with you, I have been looking for a new wallet overall anyway. It's sleek and industrial and doesn't fold or awkwardly bulge in your back pocket or get in the way similar to that of a, I guess, leather wallet that I would have when I'm serving with the army in my Canadian Armed Forces career because sometimes you do need to take your wallet into the field and big bulky leather ones are just a pain in the butt. With something like this, it's nicely protected and completely changes my whole pocket situation when trying to use things in the field. It is designed to fit easily into your pocket, and most people are still using wallets designed in the 90s, carrying around old receipts, gift cards, hotel keys, and just a complete unorganized mess. Why have we moved from large flip cell phones to the iPhone, etc., but still use the same old school leather wallet? Some of the things I genuinely like about this particular system to collect my cards and wallet items is that it holds up to 12 cards plus room for some cash, which if I need to use in the field, there it is. There's over 30 different colors and styles that you can choose from, including carbon fiber and burnt titanium. I chose the more tactical green. I really love it, but really don't take my word for it. I mean, there's about 30,000 five-star reviews on this product. I don't endorse things that I don't believe in. As I said, I do need something that's useful for me in the field. The durable materials really do mean each wallet comes with a lifetime warranty, so you can buy this one wallet and carry it around for life. The Ridge team is so confident that you will like it that they'll let you actually test drive it for 45 days, and you can send it back for a full refund if you don't like it. Also, for those of you who are really into your security, this does have RFID blocking technology that protects you from digital pickpocketers, which in the day of today, we do have that risk for sure. You can get 10% off today with the free worldwide shipping and returns by going to ridge.com forward slash walletsimus. That's ridge.com forward slash walletsimus and use the code walletsimus in the link in the description box below. So without further ado, let's talk about the G6 Rhino. Now this vehicle really is an African long-range brawler. The G6 is named after the indigenous African rhinoceros, an animal which is massive in size and extremely powerful, stationary, and even more so when charging a threat. Armed with the long, protruding horn on its snout, a rhino can devastate any attacker. Unlike its animal namesake, the G6 rhino is agile for its bulk. The G6 was planned at the height of the Cold War by South Africa to replace its aging World War II artillery pieces and to counter the Eastern Bloc supplied artillery used by the MPLA and the FAPLA. The G6 is a three-axled, rather peculiar looking, six-wheeled self-propelled howitzer which forms the backbone of the SANDF artillery arm who can field 43 of these magnificent self-propelled vehicles. Its development began during the 1960s and 1970s. The SADF still employed World War II artillery such as the 88mm quick-firing 25-pounder which was designated the G1. Also the 140mm howitzers designated the G2 and the Sexton self-propelled artillery piece to name a few. The SADF needed to upgrade its artillery and the requirement to modernize the infantry was set in 1968 and formalized during 1973. South Africa also obtained several American-made M1 155mm towed howitzers designated as the G3, which was used to develop gun drills, doctrine and logistics for the G5 45 155mm advanced long-range field artillery system known as the Leopard, and no, not the tank. Project Sherbet 3 began in 1976, led by SRC under the famous Dr. Gerald Bull. The contract for the G6 hull and the drivetrain was awarded to Sandok Ostrol and their design team did most of the work, while the LEW designed the G6 turret and the gun control system. The integration of the G545 155mm advanced long-range field artillery gun control system into a turret was allocated to Kentron. ESD was tasked with the development of the rammer control system or loading system, while Nashchem was responsible for the ammunition subsystems. The G6 was subsequently armed with the same gun as the G545 and designated the G645. The development of the G6 self-propelled gun howitzer began in its earnest during 1979 at Arms Corps under Project Zanula. The first advanced prototype was completed in October 1981, and by 1987, four G6 vehicles had been built and were pressed into service the same year during the South African border war. One G6 did suffer an engine failure due to a hole in the engine pump from a bolt that fell in during compressor change. It was subsequently towed to Magvina, where the replacement engine was flown in. 
Three days later, after the new engine was installed, the vehicle set out to join the other three G6s already deployed in the bush. All four vehicles returned to South Africa under their own power near mid-December 1987. Full-scale production began in 1988 and lasted until 1994. A modernization program codenamed Project Vasvat was implemented in 1993 to ensure all G6s had the same equipment and characteristics. A variant of the G6 known as the H45, operated by a man, 24 of them, and the United Arab Emirates of 78 of them. Danel Land Systems has continued to upgrade the G6 platform and unveiled the G652 in 2003, showcasing improved key features such as mobility, speed, range, accuracy, and ease of operation, including rate of fire, full protection against counter battery fire, and adaptability overall. Two variants of the G652 were produced, one with a standard 23 litre or 6 gallon chamber, and the other with a larger 25 litre or 6.6 .6 gallon chamber, identified by the ER designation. The G6 design features were quite peculiar. A sport, low silhouetted 6x6 wheel hull design optimised the distances and terrain it would operate in, in which it could be described as some of the most hostile in the world. The G6 is characterised by its six massive wheels, fast setup times, bush braking ability and versatility as a howitzer platform. You'll notice at the front of the vehicle the hull is shaped in somewhat of a wedge to allow it to actually chisel and cut through large brush and bush that it needs to get through. In skilled hands during the South African border war, the G6 proved itself more than capable of inflicting very heavy losses. The G5 was designed with a secondary self-defence direct anti-tank role in mind. It is thought that it could defeat any composite armoured MBT of the time, and the same is true for the G6. It came a nasty surprise to the FAPLA as it dominated the battle space by outshooting, outranging and outmanoeuvring enemy artillery. The long distances in South Africa and low force density necessitated the vehicle to operate under its own power constantly. The wheeled configuration subsequently granted the G6 operational mobility as it does not require heavy transport trains to reach its destination in line with the SADF doctrine of mobile warfare. The vehicle makes use of the central tyre inflation system which controls the six run flat radial tyre configurations. The tyres can be pressurised according to either soft, medium or hard terrain whilst on the move. All wheels are equipped with a hydropneumatic drum brake system. The G6 can lose a rear or middle wheel and still remain very maneuverable off-road. Such advantages, however, do come at a cost. In order for wheeled vehicles above 10 tons to achieve acceptable cross-country mobility, overall large size and high levels of mechanical complexity are required when compared to its tracked counterparts. The engine and gearbox are mounted on a subframe located between the driver's compartment and the fighting compartment. The G6 uses a V12 air-cooled diesel engine which produces 550 horsepower. This allows the vehicle to accelerate from 0 to 30 km an hour or 0 to 90 miles per hour in 12 seconds, which considering the size of this damn thing and the size of those wheels, it's pretty impressive. The G6 makes use of the Danel Vehicle Systems automatic gearbox with 6 forward and 1 reverse gear ratios which can be manually overridden if the need arises. The vehicle features a permanent six-wheel drive configuration with selectable longitudinal and differential locks. This configuration actually offers exceptional operational and tactical mobility off-road and on-road. Torsional bar suspension units with hydraulic shock dampeners and bump stops are located on all six wheels, which not only allows the vehicle to fire very capably in a more stable platform, but relates similar to that of armoured fighting vehicles that torsional bars can be replaced quite quickly. The steering is hydraulically assisted, considering the size of the wheels, you'd want it to be that way. The rear of the turret bustle contains the Duitz F2L511 air-cooled two-cylinder four-stroke diesel engine, which produces about 45 horsepower. There is also an APU, which the batteries are recharged by, and the air conditioning units are powered for crew comfort, which, in South Africa, I think you'd probably want a lot of. The G6 is equipped with two fuel tanks on either side of the midsection of the hull with a combined capacity of around 700 litres or 185 gallons, giving it quite the impressive operational road range of 700 kilometres or 435 miles and 350 kilometres or 280 miles cross country, allowing flexible force movement in conjunction with mechanised formations that it must keep up with as an artillery asset. Although the G6 can reach a road speed of 85 km an hour or 53 miles per hour, its recommended cruising speed is around 70 km an hour or 44 miles per hour, while cross country speeds need to be a lot lower as well, which can be quite terrain dependent. This is because the vehicle is, although very powerful and very fast, it is also quite easy to tip over. 
The G6 has about 150 litres or 40 gallons of drinking waters, which can actually be accessible via a tap located at the rear of the vehicle, underneath the hull. In terms of the vehicle's layout, it is manned by a six-man crew consisting of the commander, layer breach operator, loader, ammunition handler and driver. During an engagement, the ammunition handler and driver prepare and load the ammo from outside the rear of the loading turret, and then the driver's compartment is located front and centre of the vehicle with two front wheel wells, which is quite well protected overall from small arms fire and some potential high explosive capabilities. During battle, the driver can actually activate an armoured shield which pops up and covers the front window for extra protection. When the armoured shield is activated, the driver uses a day periscope with a view of the front. Located behind the driver is the gearbox and the engine power pack, and the driver can only enter and exit through the roof of the hatch located above his seat. The driver's station contains a very comprehensive engine monitoring system. The turret itself is mounted at the rear of the vehicle hull. Above, the two rear axles is manned by a commander, layer, breech operator and loader. It features several viewing ports and a gyro laying sight for indirect fire and a telescope for direct firing, which with this kind of vehicle would be incredibly powerful to see it knocking out a tank. The commander and breach operator are located on the right side of the ordnance, while the layer and loader are located on the left. The commander station has basic driving controls from where he can switch off the engine and apply an emergency brake to stop the vehicle. Similar to that of the tracked self-propelled guns, the commander also has access to a cupola which offers 360 degree viewing and a roof hatch to close down into. A secondary air defense 12.7mm or 7.62mm BMG for close defense can be mounted on the left of the cupola. The primary function of the 12.7 BMG is to engage low-flying enemy aircraft, lightly skinned armoured vehicles and suppress enemy infantry. Up to 2,000 rounds of 7.62mm or 1,000 rounds of 12.7mm ammunition can be carried aboard. The rear right of the turret features a hatch for crew access. A dedicated hatch for ammunition loading from outside is located at the rear centre of the turret near the floor. One bank of four 81mm electrically operated smoke grenade launchers is located on either side of the front of the turret. But let's get to the nitty gritty of artillery, and when it comes to a self-propelled gun, we want to talk about the main armament. The G6's primary armament is the 155mm 45 caliber main gun, which the G652 uses a longer 155mm 52 caliber main gun. Much of the early long distance shooting success of the G6 was due to its blast chamber having a volume of 23 litres or 6 gallons, compared to the standard international 21 litres or 5.5 gallons. The G652 also features 23 litres or 6 gallons of blast chamber, while the G652ER has 25 litres or 6.6 .6 gallon chambers. The G6's 155mm gun uses a single baffle muzzle brake and an upgraded hydropneumatic recoil system and rammer which grants a sustained 3 rounds a minute fire rate, which is pretty impressive. The G652 features a barrel cooling fan system and a modified multi-baffle design, and a new rammer which increases the rate of fire to 6 rounds per minute. The G6 breech mechanism features an interrupted screw stepped thread, while the G652 makes use of the combination swing block with mushroom head and sliding block. The elevation is maxed at plus 75 and down to minus 5 degrees, with a traverse of a maximum of 40 degrees either left or right horizontally from centre. This is obviously for its high centre of gravity, that if it was to go 360 degrees round it would damage this vehicle quite significantly. The G6 carries 39 up to 41 projectiles and 50 charges with 60 primers and 39 fuses with an additional 18 backup fuses. A total of 19 projectiles can be carried inside the turret fighting compartment for emergency use only, while 8 projectiles are stored on either side of the nose of the vehicle, quite exclusively actually, and it kind of looks kind of strange where they're put in there because they'd be the first ones to be destroyed if they were engaged by anything with small arms or high explosives. The G652 makes use of a carousel with 40 projectiles and 40 charges. All ammunition used by the G6 was developed in South Africa and supplied by Rheinmetall Denel Munitions. The G6 can fire all standard NATO 155mm ammunition as well as the M1 series ERFB and ERFBB ammunition. The G6 makes use of the M64 MCS, achieving a velocity of 909 meters a second of the HEBB or 911 meters per second for just straight HE. Something to know is the M9703 VLAV, which combines base bleed and rocket motor technology developed under Project Asagai, 
which was previously the G652ER, had achieved a range of nearly 70 kilometers or 43.5 miles by combining the M64MCS and the VLAP. As of November 2019, the bar has been raised when a G652ER fired an RDM M9703 VLAP projectile with an M64 Zone 6 charge that reached 76.3 kilometers or 47.4 miles. Now, considering that range in the area of something like South Africa, this is a game changer for artillery and very, very useful and creates a huge span of firepower. With something as wheeled and mobile as this vehicle, along with its range from the main armament, it creates a massive artillery game changer on the battlefield. The fire control system of the G6 is indirect, as targeting data originates from the forward observers who pass it on through the ATES to a fire control post before being finally transmitted to the individual G6 LMS via a frequency hopping VHF radio. The G6 layer can only aim the ordnance via a telescope site for direct fire missions, while the G652 makes use of an automatic gun laying system. The G652 features an automatic fire control system known as the AS2000, which includes an automatic gun laying and navigation system known as the FIN3110RLG, designed by DLS. The G652 features a new LMS computer and integrates the fire control computer system, GPS receiver and the ring laser gyroscope with a touchscreen display and DLS sensor. This enables the vehicle to launch multiple rounds of simultaneous impact fire which involves for the firing of several shots at different arcs towards the target so that they impact at the same time, which ensures maximum surprise as the shells impact their target all at the same moment. This can be done up to a maximum range of 50 kilometers or 31 miles. Although the G6 is capable of firing from a wheeled stance, it's equipped with four hydraulically operated stabilizer legs, two of which are located between the first and second wheel pairs and two located behind the rear wheels. These can be deployed for optimal stability. The G6 can deploy to fire in under one minute and can be mobile again in the same time, which allows for quick shoot and scoot maneuverability and tactics, making it challenging to locate, target and hit with counter artillery fire. The G6 features an all wheel steel alloy armor, which provides protection from mainly small arms fire, ballistic fragments and explosive concussion across the whole chassis. The frontal art of the vehicle is basically protection from around 20 millimeters of armor piercing projectiles. The turret does have several firing ports for the crew's personal weapons. As with most South African produced military vehicles, the chassis is mine protected with the floor of the vehicle being double layered for improved protection. This allows the G6 to withstand three TM57 anti-tank landmine explosions. The G6 incorporates a overpressure biological and chemical protection system while the G652 offers a full MBC protection system. In any case of an onboard fire, the G6 is equipped with an automatic fire suppression system. In terms of the vehicle's operational history, of course, the South African G6s have really only ever been used in operational capability during the South African border war and subsequently proved its combat capability. The G6 is fielded by the UAE and armed forces in Yemen has been actively used in its conflict since August 2015. Few would disagree though that the G6 was ahead of its time when it was first fielded in 1987. The SANDF actively operates 9 G6 vehicles while the remaining 34 are in preservation storage during peacetime. Characterized by its impressive fire range, mobility, speed, accuracy and endurance, it remains at the front of the pack when compared to other wheeled and tracked self propelled howitzers around the world. The original objectives of the long range fire, speed, mobility, flexibility and easy logistics are complemented by the G6's overall crew protection. Though continued upgrades, the G6 can remain a very powerful force to be reckoned with in the field of self-propelled howitzer vehicles in the foreseeable future. And I have to say, I do safely stand by that point and statement. This vehicle is extremely capable for what it was designed for. Long range artillery capability, off-roading and on-roading at high speeds, and protection to the crew from IED blasts or any kind of mine blast protection. I also really love the fact that the wedge of this thing is designed to literally chisel through the brush and the bush. The armored crew compartment for the driver is also pretty capable of withstanding the kind of attacks that it would get. We're not talking about a vehicle that's been going up against T-80s or T-90s, T-72s. We're talking about something that's going to go against, you know, small maybe BMPs, 20mm auto cannons, things like this, which that compartment should be able to withstand quite a bit of a beasting from. The capability though of this vehicle really comes from its range, not just its operational range from driving, but the range in which it can work from that operational range with that gun. 
huge amounts of ability to launch projectiles at huge ranges with rocket assisted projectiles really give the battlefield a huge span of capacity for what this thing can actually destroy. It is also a battle tested vehicle and there aren't that many self propelled guns out there that can really say they've gone against a bush war and done exactly what they've asked them to do. Yes, we know the track self-propelled guns out there really are normally the forefront of SPGs, but let's talk about more wheeled SPGs for the future. I think this would be a fantastic vehicle for some other nations out there looking for more capable SPGs. Track vehicles are high maintenance, and something like this would not be useful for the South African Defence Force in the way it utilises large amounts of terrain, very hot dusty conditions, you'd want something on wheels, which is why the G6 Rhino has done so well for itself. I really am extremely impressed with the capacity and capability of what this artillery system can do, and as you know, myself being an artillery gunner, I have huge interest in these kind of systems because it'd be really cool if I could have one myself to shoot. <laughs> Anyway, thank you all so much for joining me today. I really do appreciate it. Once again, please make sure you check out that Ridge description link below. So if you want to check out that wallet, you can. And also, if you do want to be notified of any upcoming content in the future, please click that little bell by the subscribe button so you can be notified of videos next time. I also have all my other sorts of social media and support pages in the description box below as well. So you can check those links out. And thank you to everyone who has been supporting me on Patreon, uh, Super chats and live streams and all the other support you've been doing in memberships it really does mean very very much to me so thank you so so much hope you all have a wonderful day and learn something today about the g6 rhino take care everyone bye bye